1965, a movie emerged that aimed to narrate one of the most influential stories in human history. Titled The Greatest Story Ever Told, it brought together an ensemble cast featuring classic Hollywood actors. Who was your favorite among these legends? As you dive into the film, be prepared for a roller coaster of emotions. There are moments that will make you laugh, shock you, and perhaps even leave you a bit teary-eyed. So, keep your eyes glued to the screen, there's more to come. Reflecting on this epic, did any particular scene or moment have a lasting impact on you? Share your thoughts below, we're eager to hear your perspective. Now, think back to your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this cinematic journey. Was it a special screening with loved ones, or a moment of personal revelation inspired by the narrative? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Get ready for a trip down memory lane and share your insights the world of the greatest story ever told holds many untold tales. In the mid-1960s, a cinematic masterpiece emerged that captured the essence of an era and left an indelible mark on the silver screen. Enter a film that transcended its time, weaving a captivating narrative that resonates even today. Picture this, it's 1965, and audiences are drawn into a world where epic tales unfold, set against the backdrop of ancient times. As the curtains rise, the screen comes alive with a story that goes beyond the ordinary, delving into the profound and timeless narrative of one of history's most significant figures. This remarkable cinematic endeavor took on the monumental task of bringing the life of Jesus Christ to the big screen. It wasn't just a movie, it was an ambitious project that sought to capture the magnitude of its subject matter. Set against the vibrant tapestry of the biblical world, the film unfolds with an ensemble cast featuring acclaimed actors who brought these historical figures to life. The significance lies not only in its narrative, but also in the meticulous attention to detail recreating the landscapes and costumes of the ancient world. During a time when the film industry was bustling with creativity and experimentation, it stood out for its grandeur and ambition. It marked a moment in cinematic history when filmmakers embarked on ventures that aimed to transcend the ordinary and delve into the extraordinary. The era of the 1960s was a turning point for cinema, and this film played a pivotal role in shaping the landscape of epic storytelling on the big screen. It wasn't just a movie released in theaters. It was an immersive experience that transported audiences to a different time and space. This masterpiece holds its significance not just as a cinematic achievement, but as a cultural touchstone. It remains a part of the intriguing legacy of storytelling, etching its place in the annals of film history. The narrative, the characters, and the visual spectacle continue to captivate audiences, making it a classic that withstands the test of time. In conclusion, this journey through time and history, a cinematic portrayal, continues to resonate with audiences, reminding us of the power of storytelling on the grandest scale. The Greatest Story Ever Told, directed by George Stevens in 1965, is an epic portrayal of the life of Jesus Christ. Amidst its grand narrative, several standout moments resonate, leaving an indelible mark on viewers. One memorable episode unfolds during the Sermon on the Mount. In this pivotal scene, a vast, diverse crowd gathers on the breathtaking landscape to hear Jesus deliver his teachings. The camera captures the profound impact of his words on the mesmerized audience, creating a poignant testament to the enduring power of his message. Another remarkable moment occurs during the miraculous feeding of the 5,000. Here, Jesus takes a meager offering of loaves and fishes, turning it into a bountiful feast for the hungry multitude. The scene is intricately etched with a sense of awe and wonder, showcasing Jesus' remarkable ability to transform the ordinary into the extraordinary. The crucifixion sequence stands out as a powerful portrayal of sacrifice and redemption. As Jesus is nailed to the cross, the cinematography skillfully captures the anguish and solemnity of the moment. The surrounding landscape, now shadowed and somber, adds to the gravity of the scene, making it a captivating depiction of a pivotal event in Christian history. In the resurrection sequence, the film masterfully captures the profound moment when Jesus rises from the tomb. The use of light and shadow, coupled with an emotive score, creates an atmosphere of divine triumph, resonating with viewers on a spiritual level. This iconic scene serves as a poignant conclusion to the narrative, leaving a lasting impact on those who witness it. The greatest story ever told weaves together these and other moments into a rich tapestry that brings the biblical narrative to life. 
The film's ability to portray these key episodes with such depth and authenticity contributes to its legacy as a cinematic masterpiece. MGM invested over 500,000 restoring the greatest story ever told for its 2001 DVD release. Notably, Donald Pleasance, Telly Savalas, and Max von Sydow later portrayed the James Bond villain Ernst Stavro Blofeld in different Bond films. During filming, Joanna Dunham became pregnant. To work around this, director George Stevens strategically shot her scenes, focusing from the chest up in later parts, creating a noticeable contrast with the earlier ones. These intriguing facts shed light on the behind-the-scenes dynamics of the movie, offering a glimpse into the challenges faced and the subsequent paths of some key cast members. A unique blend of historical drama and cinematic craftsmanship, it continues to captivate audiences, reminding us of the intricate stories behind the lens. Filming the greatest story ever told in 1965 presented unforeseen challenges. The first snowstorm to hit Arizona in decades buried the Jerusalem set, prompting a laborious effort by several hundred cast and crew members to clear it using shovels, wheelbarrows, bulldozers, and butane flamethrowers. Despite their efforts, another, more intense snowfall occurred, leading to a decisive relocation of production to Dezilu Studios in Hollywood. The film initially employed the three-strip Cinerama process for filming. However, after three days, the production transitioned to the 70mm Ultra Panavision 70 format. Meanwhile, during a hiatus between directing Lawrence of Arabia and Dr. Zhivago, Sir David Lean lent a hand to George Stevens by directing interior scenes with Claude Rains and Jose Ferrer. Lean also entrusted Jean Negulesco with directing the nativity scene. Notably, Lean's contributions were captured by uncredited cinematographer Charles Lang. These production nuances offer a glimpse into the pragmatic challenges faced, from battling extreme weather conditions to adapting filming technologies. Such behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the dynamic collaboration between renowned directors and the concerted efforts to overcome hurdles during the making of this iconic film. Max von Sydow, a versatile actor in his career, portrayed Jesus, Satan, and the title character in The Exorcist. Jamie Farr, desperate for work during auditions, ironically prayed to St. Jude for the role and ended up cast as the Apostle Thaddeus, an alternate name for St. Jude. The John the Baptist sequence, shot at the Glen Canyon area, pressured director George Stevens due to its impending transformation into Lake Powell with a Glen Canyon dam completion, causing a delay in the project. These anecdotes offer insight into the diverse roles played by cast members and the challenges faced during production. George Stevens, known for his meticulous approach, employed a unique filming method for the greatest story ever told. He would capture long shots from various angles before focusing on close-ups for each scene's participants. This methodical technique added depth to the visual narrative. The film's production spanned from 1962 to 1963, yet it remained unreleased until 1965. This delay, though unconventional, contributed to the anticipation surrounding its eventual unveiling. Notably, Max von Sydow, a renowned Swedish actor, made his American debut in the film. Prior to this, von Sydow gained fame in Ingmar Bergman's works. George Stevens intentionally sought an unfamiliar face, free from secular associations, to portray a pivotal role. In summary, the greatest story ever told, marked by Stevens' precise filming style and a deliberate release strategy, introduced American audiences to Von Sydow, a distinguished actor from Swedish cinema. These aspects underscore the movie's unique journey and significance in cinematic history. Constructing 47 sets, both on location and in Hollywood studios, the greatest story ever told presented an ambitious cinematic endeavor. Completed in August 1963, director George Stevens amassed an extensive 6 million feet of Ultra Panavision 70 film, marking it as the most expensive U.S. movie at the time. The staggering 25 million budget, equivalent to approximately 185 million today, ranked it second only to Cleopatra in terms of production cost. Telly Savalas, in his role as Pontius Pilate, committed to shaving his head, a distinctive choice he maintained for the rest of his life. The meticulous efforts behind the film, coupled with its unprecedented scale and cost, underscore its significance in cinematic history. Director George Stevens faced unique challenges while filming the greatest story ever told. Originally, 550 Navajos were hired as Roman legionnaires, but they had to leave for a tribal election. 
Stevens then enlisted reserve officers training Corps cadets as replacements. The movie's expansive backdrop was the American Southwest, featuring locations in Arizona, California, Nevada, and Utah. Stevens opted for U.S. settings over the Middle East or Europe, aiming for a grandeur effect. He justified this choice, stating, I know that Colorado is not the Jordan, nor is southern Utah Palestine, but our intention is to romanticize the area, and it can be done better here. Stevens constructed 47 sets in various locations and Hollywood studios to bring his vision to life. To populate scenes, Stevens utilized local resources. ROTC cadets played Roman soldiers, replacing the Navajo extras. Disabled state aid recipients provided by the Arizona Department of Welfare portrayed the afflicted seeking healing from Jesus. In summary, the greatest story ever told, filmed under George Stevens' meticulous direction, overcame challenges with creative solutions, offering a distinctive portrayal of biblical events in the American Southwest. Max von Sydow, tasked with portraying Christ, grappled with the demand to remain in character continuously. Prohibited from smoking between takes, having post-work drinks, or displaying affection towards his wife on set, he faced heightened expectations. Director George Stevens, known for meticulous editing, spent a year perfecting the movie. Shooting numerous takes, he amassed extensive footage, causing a delay in the planned Christmas 1964 release. Eventually premiering at Easter 1965, the film ran for three hours and 45 minutes, earning a place among the longest movies. Despite subsequent recuts, the original version from the 1960s remains unseen. Ironically, Max von Sydow, despite playing Jesus, declared himself an atheist. Later, he participated in other biblical films like Samson and Delilah and Solomon, both made for television. In summary, challenges faced by actors and the director's meticulous approach offer a unique perspective on the unconventional journey of the film, shedding light on the intricate dynamics behind the scenes.